Hi everybody, in this video I'll be walking you through the process of creating the basic T9 connector piece that you see in the picture below. I will be using Autodesk Inventor to do this. I do want to note before we get going that I am not using the same process that is taught in the curriculum. The process that I'm using I've found over teaching this course a number of years. Uh, the process that I use will be a little bit more straightforward and has less headaches that we run into, less issues with like closed loops. So without further ado, let's go ahead and take a look at the sketch that is given to us. This is the top left corner. We're going to start with a basic version of this, but we're not going to use any of the rounds or fillets or anything that you see in here. We're just going to start with a couple of rectangles and we're going to go from there. Okay, so let's open up Autodesk Inventor. And in fact, I'm going to take this, I'm going to move this off to the side so I can use it on my second monitor. I'm going to start a new sketch on the XY plane. I'm going to start with just the basic overall dimensions of this corner piece. So I'm going to start in the origin with a rectangle. And I know that this rectangle is 1.15 wide. And I know that it is a total height of 0.39. So you're going to see I'm going to try to match this up with what I'm given in the sketch, okay, in the curriculum. Um, I know that I have in the middle of this a line that kind of cuts through. And it's going to come down and over and up. And notice that I'm not really concerned about dimensions at this point in time. I do need to lock these into place, though. This is where I'm going to add the dimensions in. So, for instance, I know that the distance between this line and this line is given to me as 0.39 inches. No, 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 not 0.39. That would be the total height, 0.32 inches. Okay. I know that the distance from this top line down to the bottom line is given to me as 0.22 inches. I know that the distance from this line to the right side is given to me as 0 0.300 inches. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get out, I'm gonna escape and get out of the dimension tool because now I can see I kind of messed this up. I'm gonna take my green line and just drag it back over. That's what green lines can do, right? They're not locked down yet, so I can drag this wherever I want to. I'm gonna kind of place it in the correct spot. And I notice that the gap between these two lines here is given to me as 0.04 inches. So now you can see this thing is fully constrained. Everything is purple now, right? I'm going to finish the sketch now. Before doing any of those rounds, I'm going to extrude this, just the bottom piece. Um, I'm going to go backwards, and I can't remember the distance. I want to say 0.3 inches from memory, okay? 0.3 inches. And now we have the top right corner, or top left corner, excuse me, okay? Now at this point in time, this is where I would have my students add all of the fillets. So we'll go through and it's gonna be a series of three fillets. The top left corner, I'm told, has a radius of 0.1. I'm gonna enter. Actually, I'm gonna hit apply. Now I'm gonna go down here to this edge, click on it, and I'm told this one has a radius of 0.04. Click apply. And I'm told that the top edge here has a radius of 0.05. I'm going to click OK this time because I'm done adding fillets. Now I have the top left corner, and that was pretty easy, right? It's time now to do a couple of mirror commands. So the mirror command is up here under the pattern tool, the pattern menu. But I don't want to mirror a feature. A feature is like a fillet. I don't want to have to do all of these fillets individually. What I want is to come over here and say, I want to mirror the entire solid. And it notice that it grabs the whole thing for me. The mirror plane that I want, the first time, let's just go ahead and mirror across this plane. I can click a flat surface, click OK, and now I have the entire top is created. Let's do the same thing. Mirror the entire solid body. But let's look at it from below, and let's choose our mirror plane to be bottom surface. I click OK. And now, all I have to do is go change, perhaps, the material or the look to be bright green. Click on the little color filter. Let's change this to, like, the neon green that it is. You can adjust the darkness if you want to. Click the check mark. And we basically have a completed piece in just a few steps. Hopefully this makes sense. If you have any questions, feel free to ask me in class.